Hey guys, we're back with another uh, Hobley Booze review. This one is actually a request. Um, I don't know who requested it. It was a long, long time ago. Uh, but it's always been in the back of my mind. Um, I don't even know if the person still watches my channel or not, okay, to be honest. Um, this is Bombay Sapphire Gin, okay? And I finally had the money to pick this up um, because of you guys clicking my ads and I finally got my YouTube check, as you probably know. So this is what some of the money went to. Uh, I'm going to keep the rest of the things a surprise. You'll see it when you see it. Uh, this is Bombay, as I said, Bombay Sapphire Gin, 40% alcohol by volume. Uh, if you're not sure what gin is, uh, it's a spirit. Uh, its flavors are usually taken from juniper berries, although there are versions that are just pure alcohol that have been flavored. And usually different gins uh, also have different ingredients flavoring them up, okay? A uh, very popular drink from the 17th century, invented first by the Dutch, I believe, uh, became very popular in England when there was actually a Dutch monarch on the throne of England, or a Dutch-born monarch anyway, I guess. Um, this particular brand uh, was launched by Bacardi in 1987, and uh, the name is taken from the uh, Star of Bombay, which is a giant sapphire, uh, blue sapphire. That's where you get the color of the bottle here. The gin itself is not blue, sadly. That would be kind of cool. But uh, And you can see uh, sort of the top-down version of the Star of Bombay. And in the center is Queen Victoria. Uh, she was an advocate of gin drinking, apparently. This here has a bunch of different uh, flavors in it. Uh, apparently things distilled three times to smooth it out. Um, it's got it's got a sort of like printed on the side here, etched in, well not etched in like uh, frosted on I guess. The different uh, ingredients. It's got juniper berries, lemon peel from Spain, juniper berries from Italy, uh, coriander seeds from Morocco, angelica root from Saxony, orris from Italy, grains of paradise from West Africa, Cuba berries from Java, cassia bark from Indochina, almonds from Spain, and licorice from China. Hand selected botanicals it says, and gin was used a lot and still is kind of considered a medicinal sort of alcohol. Okay. Now we're going to do it straight here, and then on the end of this video, or the second half of this video, I'm going to attach uh, a drink recipe. Uh, no, don't get excited, I'm not going to start doing drink recipes all the time or anything, but um, I think in the case of, the, of a spirit this strong in flavors, uh, people might want to be interested in a simple drink recipe to try to, um, you know, make it more palatable for them if they want to try it out, okay? So, um, we're just going to pour a little bit here, not a full shot. It's enough to taste. You can see it's clear. Looks like any other clear uh, distilled liquor. Now, the smell of this is very mild. Uh, most, uh, the thing you should, should be mentioned about this is this brand is been launched uh, to be very mild, very consumer friendly. Um, tr typically gin is much stronger in, in flavor and aroma than this gin is. Uh, first impressions you might get is aftershave. <laughs> and I know that might sound a little off-putting and it actually kind of looks like it might be aftershave in the bottle, right? Uh, aqua Velva comes to mind, really. Um, but you smell it a bit more, and you do get the juniper berries right off the hand. Um, a bit of that grainy alcohol. A uh, little bit of citrusy uh, notes in there. And there is some licorice kind of sweetness. Uh, it's not a big, strong aroma. Um, it's very smooth, actually quite nice, but it's, it, it does have that very sort of uh, medicinal kind of uh, quality to it. So we'll go right to the taste now. Mm. 
Yeah. Now, as harsh as it is, it is a very smooth gin. Very warming going down though. Uh, the juniper really comes out. Um, there is slight citric notes, um, but a lot of the stuff that they list on here doesn't really come out a lot. It sort of all mishmashes together into one big flavor. Uh, very much uh, sort of juniper berry, and then it sort of bowls over into alcohol uh, slightly. Not a big alcohol note to it though. It's not. It's not going to hit your gag reflex. I don't think the flavors might, but the alcohol won't. It doesn't taste that great though. It's not. It's not very flavorful. Is that? That's probably the problem with it. Uh, this is not designed to really be a straight drinking kind of gin. It's very much intended that you mix it, and so we're going to get to that here soon. Um, is it drinkable? Yeah, it's drinkable. Is it okay? It's okay. It's not great. Um, I've had better gins than this, although years and years ago, and back then I didn't think they were great at all. I don't, I'm not a big fan of gin in the first place. I had some strong strong gins when I was like a teenager in my early 20s, and they really turned me off, but um, you people requested it. Someone did, and I try to fulfill requests as best as I can. So. Is it recommended as a straight drinker? No, but for mixing, this is actually a really good gin. Um, if you want to mix yourself a good strong drink of interesting flavors, uh, and you know, it's a good party gin, I guess is the best way to put it. And we're going to get to that right here in a second. We'll be right back, and I will show you a quick gin drink that anyone can do. Ah! Don't drink and use knives, kids. Um, have your mom and daddy supervise you if you're doing this. Uh, the, gin, the drink we're going to make is probably the classic gin drink after the martini, although I think this came before the martini. Uh, gin and tonic. Very classic drink. And even the one we're going to make is kind of kind of a pussyfied version of it, I guess. Like Even when people make gin and tonics, they generally try to use stronger gins and they want to make a stronger, more flavorful gin and tonic with more gin than what I'm going to be using here. But this is just a simple drink for uh, that anyone can do. Uh, gin and tonic was um, invented back uh, right around the same time gin was introduced, really, uh, or became popular anyway. Uh, British East India Company, um, a lot of malaria going around. Uh, they used to drink tonic water to uh, to uh, stop malaria. Now, tonic water contains a uh, element called uh, quinine or quinine, something along those lines. Quinine, I think it is. Uh, quinine, um, and it's a very bitter substance. It, like, really makes makes it very bitter. Like the tonic water you buy now is like nothing compared to like authentic tonic water. To make it palatable, uh, basically they invented this drink. Uh, adding gin and garnishing with either lemon or lime. Uh, sort of, it's to balance out the bitterness and the actual tonic water. So, to make a gin and tonic, um, you first need like a tumbler, highball glass, something along those lines, almost filled with ice. Now take your gin. In this case, we're going to use a shot and a half of gin. Uh, you can augment this recipe any way you want. I just find it's best for me to have a shot and a half. Uh, that's the nice balance I've found that I like. So I have my big shot glass here, which actually goes up to a shot and a half. Genuine shot glass. And you just pour it down. Now, you want to use tonic water. Schweppes is a very popular tonic water, as good as any, I guess. It's the most widely available one that I know of. I'm going to put about, and yeah, of course, um, this shot glass, which is a shot and a half or whatever, well, not quite shot and a half, but um, 
that roughly translates to an ounce and a half is what I'm putting in here when I fill this up. So we got an ounce and a half of gin in there. We're going to put four and a half ounces of tonic water in there. Of course, like I said, you can change this all you want. You can, you can have two shots of one. You can have one shot of gin for every two ounces. Whatever you want to do. Okay. So gin over there. And I'll take my lime. Get limes in any grocery store. Incredibly cheap. Very handy. Now it's usually recommended that you um, use uh, like a lime wedge, like you cut a wedge out. I like using lime slices personally. Shaky table, hope I don't knock anything over here. Okay, so you just want to put, make it as thick as you want I guess, short of putting the whole lime in the glass. Got to make uh, Try to squeeze a little bit of the juice in there first and garnish it. You don't have to stick it on the side or wrap the peel around or make it fancy like that. You just plop it in there. Give it a little stir. And voila! Voila! Get your gin and tonic, although Really, that should be above the ice, but it gets pop. So you smell the gin and tonic, and really all you're going to get is the uh, lime smell. Uh, like I said, I think I believe I said you could use a lemon too, what, whichever one you prefer, lemon or lime. It smells very much like um, unsweetened lime pop, I guess. And there we go, that one's pretty much well on. Um, up front you get a bit of the uh, sweetness from the different uh, things in the gin, most noticeably the uh, licorice sort of comes out at the very tip of the tongue and around the sides. Mm. And you get this big lime citrus at the top of your mouth. Uh, nice subtle, well not quite subtle, but like mild uh, sourness, citric sourness at the end. It becomes a very refreshing drink. Very, very nice. Perfect for a hot summer's day. And so there you go. Um, I would try a martini, but I don't have a shaker or a strainer or any of that shit. So, um, Bombay Sapphire Gin, recommended if you want to mix drinks. Uh, not necessarily recommended if you I uh, just want to drink it straight. There are better, more flavorful gins for that. And until next time, guys, we'll see you. Have a good one. Cheers.